everyone, Kelly here, and I haven't been doing TBR videos for probably the last year now, but every once in a while there's a month when I kind of have something I want to promote or things like that. So this is one of those months I am participating in a read along that I wanted to share with you. And so I figured I would just create a TBR. I have some very set things that I'm doing like this read along, a couple buddy reads, some new releases. And then I have some things that will be kind of more mood reading. And if you notice behind me a big gap of empty space in my bookshelf, it's because I'm doing some reorganizing and I just haven't finished that project yet. Um, so let's get to the things that I want to talk about for May reading. First of all, like I said, I'll be participating in a group read or read along of the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Krista from Books and Jams is hosting this group read and there are several of us that are joining in on live discussions every week. This is a shorter book. I don't have my physical copy to show you because it's in the mail right now coming to me and this is a nonfiction. So if you are interested in joining us, we'd be happy to have you. We're going to be doing, I think the book is split into four sections from what she said and we're gonna be doing one section each week in May and having a live show on the weekend. If you want to know specifics of any of that stuff, I will link her announcement video down below. And also if you want to participate and watch the lives, you need to um, follow her channel since all of that will be on hers. And I will show up in some of the lives to discuss. We're taking turns being on each of those live show. So those are, that is the first thing is that read along. And then I'm doing two buddy reads and both of my buddy reads this month are giant books. So I'm keeping this TBR sh small because even though Mere Christianity is a short book, these next two are giant. So first of all, I am going to be buddy reading The Count of Monte Cristo with Kara from Wild Book Garden. And we've been talking about doing this for a while. I have had this book on my TBR forever. I think I actually started reading it back in like 2004 or something like that and just never finished it because I was really busy at work at that time in my life. And so now this is the time where I actually want to read this thing. So we are taking the whole month, just taking our time reading through this whole book. Hopefully we'll be able to finish it in the month. I'm sure you've heard of this. It's a classic. It's a revenge story and I'm really excited. I loved the movie back when I was younger and so that's why I had started the book back when I watched the movie and then never finished the book. So I'm excited to finally be doing this. And then the other one is a book that just came out last month. It came out in April and that is the Women of Chateau Lafayette by Stephanie Dre. And this is a historical fiction that is also <laughs> huge. And this is following three women throughout time that are living in the Chateau in France. And so it covers actually three wars and three women that are living in this estate, castle, whatever it is, during each of those wars. So the first woman it's following is um, Adrienne, who is the wife of the Marquis de Lafayette, who was the one that was in the musical Hamilton. So he fought in both our war for independence and the French Revolution. And so this is, follows her during the French Revolution. And then in 1914, it follows a woman named Beatrice during World War I. And then in 1940, it follows a woman named Marte. I think. And I'm hopefully going to get the audiobook so I'll know how to pronounce all these names. And it follows her during Nazi occupied World War II. So we're following three wars of women that live in the same home. So that should be really interesting. I've liked two of the other books that I have read by Stephanie Dre. So I am interested to check this one out. But like I said, big. So my two buddy reads this month are ginormous. So I am not going to like commit myself to reading a bunch of other stuff. As long as I get those three done, I will be happy. But I have some other things I wanna read. I've been trying to keep up with 2021 releases this year and putting out a video each month of the new releases that I'm reading. And I had done one recently where I told you kind of the books that I still had out from the library that I wanna read. Well, I got two more in from the library that I want to read because these actually are due in like two weeks. The first one is Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Casimano and I've seen this just like everywhere on Instagram and it looks like it's fun. It's like, a, it says a mystery down here, but I think it's supposed to be a comedic mystery. It's about this woman who, she's an author and I think she writes mystery novels and she's pitching a novel to like a publicist or agent or something at a lunch and somebody mistakes her for a contract killer and then tries to hire her to kill someone. So I think it's gonna be kind of a 
comedy mystery farce type of book which sounds like a lot of fun so I do want to read this before it's due back to the library and then I have Everyone Dies Famous in a Small Town by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock and this is a collection of short stories of teenagers in Alaska. You probably recognize this author's name. She wrote The Smell of Other People's Houses which was really big a few years ago which also took place in Alaska so I actually have the audiobook version of this out from the library right now and the audiobook is only like three hours long like it's pretty short something like that so this will definitely happen at the beginning of May. So those are the two new releases I definitely want to get to and obviously um, this one is also a new release. So I will at least be talking about these three new releases in that video. If I get to some of the other ones that I mentioned that I have from the, out from the library, great, but none of those are due back in May. So with, I don't want to like overcommit myself to read all of the new releases I have out right now. And then the next category of books that I want to highlight are books written by Asian or Pacific Islander authors. And that is because May is AAPI Heritage Month, which is Asian American and Pacific Islander American Month. And so I wanted to highlight authors that are Asian American, but also some of these authors live in Asia and their, their works are translated or um, maybe written in English, but they live in Asia. And I just really wanted to draw some attention to some of these authors because it is AAPI Heritage Month and also because there is a lot going on in the Asian communities with, you know, violence against AAPI persons, but also there is some really hard times happening in India right now. I'm going to link down below the link that is going around about how to donate to people for um, COVID relief in India. So if you would do have the funds and would like to help support medical care over there, um, I will link that down below. But yes, I just wanted to highlight some of these authors. These are all books that I own and I'm interested in. So what I did was I split it into three categories of nonfiction, middle grade fiction and then YA and adult fiction combined together and I would like to read one book from each of those categories so that I would be reading a total of three books from Asian or Pacific Islander authors. So the first category is nonfiction and what two of these are memoirs and then one is kind of like kind of memoir but also kind of relating information to his son. So that is Letters to a Young Muslim by Omar Saif Gobesh. And this is one I had started um, back in January. So I've made it like a third of the way through. And then I was listening to an audiobook and the audiobook returned. So I would like to get back to this. I'll try to get the audiobook again. This is fairly short. So if I get the audiobook, I could be listening to this while I'm reading some of these other bigger books physically. But this is written by a man who he was the ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to Russia. And so that was his role. And he is writing this letter to his son about how to be a young Muslim in a more modern world. That was one that I would really like to finish. If I can finish that one, it would be great. But if for some reason I can't get a hold of the audiobook, I might choose one of these other two. The next one is The Lightless Sky by Gowali Passerle. And this is his memoir of his time when he was 12, year, 12 years old and he was a refugee um, fleeing from Afghanistan. So I've heard this one is a really good book. And then I have The Girl with Seven Names Escape from North Korea by Hyun Se Lee. And this is a girl who left North Korea in 1997 when she was 17 and she fled to China. I'm not sure where she went from there or if she stayed in China. So I'd be interested to see what happened with her life. And so, yeah, that's one of, those are the three nonfiction books. I would like to choose one of those. Probably will be finishing the one that I already started if I can get it on audio. And then the next category is a mix of young adult and adult books. Um, the first one is Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed. And this is about a Pakistani-American girl, I believe. And she is dating an American boy and her parents are not happy about it. And so they go to visit family. I'm just making sure this is taking place partly in Pakistan. Yes. So then her family takes her to Pakistan to visit 
her family members. And that's all I'm going to say because I didn't want to read the rest of the description because I've heard the mood kind of changes a lot throughout this book and so I don't really want to spoil myself since it's actually not very long. It's only 280 pages. So that one's a high contender because I did read the first chapter and a try a chapter tag um, last year I think and I liked the writing so this is definitely high on the list as a possibility from this category. Next is Battle Royale by I forgot to look up how to say this author's name. I think the last name is Takami. And this is like the book that like everybody says Hunger Games originated from. So it is very similar to that where it's a group of students that are sent into an arena and have to kill each other off. I really do want to read this one, but because it is a big one, I think it's like 600 pages. I don't know if I can get to this one in a month full of other really big reads. That's why I might opt for the shorter book, but I do really want to get to this because I love The Hunger Games and I've heard that this is really excellent. So it would be nice to read this. And this is from a Japanese author. And the last one in this category is Out by Natsua Kurino. And this is also a Japanese translated work. And this is a thriller that takes place in Tokyo. And I think we're actually following the murderer and she's a woman. So I, I, have, I had read the synopsis of this back when I bought it, but that was like a year ago. So I don't remember exactly, but I think it's like this woman kills her abusive husband and then she goes and asks her coworker to help dispose of the body. And then we're following the murderer in this book, which sounds really interesting. I have heard from somebody else that this was a really good book. So yeah, those are the three in the category of YA and adult books. And then for middle grade, the first one is one I just bought and that is Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. Oh. Um, Ellen O oh is Korean American and this is a ghost story. I don't know a lot about it, but when I read The Night Gardener, I think was that in March, I just like fell in love with creepy middle grade books and I started looking up all of the creepy, creepy middle grade and this one popped up. And so I just know that it's a paranormal ghost story type thing. So if I get in the mood for something spooky, this is the one I'll probably pick from this category. And then I also have more to the story by Hena Han. And this is an author that I really loved. The other books I've read by her, I read Amina's Voice and Amina's Song. I just finished Amina's Song like a couple weeks ago and I loved it. And since I own this story, I am really excited to read it. So this might be one I pick up, but you know, like I should give some other authors a chance, but she is a Pakistani American author. And, and this is a retelling of little women with an American Muslim family. So sounds amazing but like i said i should probably give some other authors a chance but i might just give into the fact that i just really want to read that book and then the last one in this category is where the mountain meets the moon by grace lynn this is actually from the library and i have read this book before but when i read it the first time i listened to it on audiobook and i just didn't really love it and i think that a lot of that was because i was listening to it on audiobook and during a time when i was really distracted it was when i was moving i think and like organizing things at this house so I really just want to pick it up physically at some point and give it a, a more fair shot because I've read other things by Graceland now and have loved them and this book specifically so many people love it on booktube I've heard a lot of people rave about it so I do want to give it a better chance and um, this is kind of like a mix of Chinese folklore and I think it's about a girl and a dragon like I don't even remember like that's how bad it was that I have read this book like two years ago and still don't remember what it's about so I definitely need to give it a reread so these are the three options for middle grade books so like I said I'm not going to read all nine of those books I'm going to pick one from each category hopefully read three books by Asian authors and if you are interested in any of those I'll make sure to put all the titles down below with the author names so you can go look them up if you would also like to support some AAPI authors or some um, Asian authors in general. And that's it for me and my May TBR. Some of those buddy reads are going to be really big books but really overall that's only um, if I'm only reading one from each of those categories in total, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's only eight books total. So, I, and I usually read closer to like 15 to 18 books a month. So I think by saying I'm going to just read eight books, that'll help with the fact that two of them are like a thousand pages long. It's fine. That's like what? That's like reading two to three books. So it'll all add up to about the same amount of pages that I would normally read. It'll work out. So yeah, I would love to hear what you're reading in May. 
and I'll talk to you down in the comments. See you next time. Bye.